But how does the speeder then see the world that it can feed it into the network? Well, the devs break down the game world into two distinct elements, the immediate vicinity and the path the speeder is meant to be moving along. The paths themselves are computed courtesy of the navigation mesh built into the engine, and then it breaks it down into a corridor of triplets, containing the left point, the center point, and the right point. Each of these triplets then exist on the path at fixed distances along the way. Meanwhile, nearby obstacles are recorded by breaking up the space around the speeder and finding if sensors intersect with a nav mesh edge that would line up with an obstacle. But of course, that only works for a static obstacle, because even if the nav mesh could capture moving objects, they'd be moving too quickly to wait for the nav mesh to update itself. So dynamic obstacles are tracked by their relative position to the speeder, though it can only track two at a time. But it's not just the environmental information. There's a lot of other data being fed into the network as well about the speeder itself, including the current forward, angular and drift velocity, the elevation angles, given the surfaces are seldom flat, but also the previous actions taken by the speeder over previous frames. This is super important, given if it's trying to make turns or fast movements, it's vital that it can retain context of what has happened previously, rather than like forget what it was doing halfway around a turn.